Tuesday on ABC. Happy days. Remember those carefree years when you were young and you had everything to look forward to? Well, our family certainly does. All we had was some beer and teeny weeny glasses. How many teeny weeny glasses did you have? 72. It all happens here on the happy days. I'm Ron Howard. And I'm Donnie Moose. We're wishing you holiday greetings from all of us on, on happy days. days. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're going to rock around the clock tonight. Play the glad flag song. Join me, hon. We'll have some fun when the clock strikes one. We're going to rock around the clock tonight. We're going to rock, rock, rock till broad daylight. We're going to rock, going to rock around the clock tonight. When the clock strikes two, three, and four, if the band slows down, We're gonna rock, rock, rock till broad daylight We're gonna rock, gonna rock around the clock tonight When the giants rank five, six and seven We'll be right in seventh heaven We're gonna rock around the clock tonight We're gonna rock Definitely talk about Alf. Sunday, Monday, happy days. Tuesday, Wednesday, happy days. Thursday, Friday, happy days. The weekend comes, my cycle hums. Ready to race to you. These days are on. Christmas, everybody, and welcome back to the 25th and final episode of year one of Sitcom All Ye Faithful, where today I'm here to discuss my favorite show of all time, my favorite sitcom of all time. Happy Days. Today, I'm here talking about Season 2. Once again, a Season 2. Episode 11. From December 17th, 1974. Guess who's coming to Christmas? IMDb describes it as The Cunningham Family's Christmas is all set but Richie finds out Fonzie, despite being popular, is alone this holiday. So Richie decides to ask his folks to let him join them. But will his folks or Fonzie accept? 
So I want to talk about this episode, but I also uh, want to talk about Happy Days in general and the specific stream that I watched um, this episode on. So first off, the episode. Uh, we, we, we have all our, our major players here uh, in the early on seasons. Uh, we have Richie, we have Ralph Mouth, Potsy Weber, uh, we have Joni, we have, of course, Mr. and Mrs. C, uh, and, of course, the big one, Arthur Von Zarelli. Uh, Richie, I mean, um, Potsy and Ralph Mouth really don't do much of anything in this episode. They're there to do a quick, um, quick sexual assault and then move on. Uh, and, and just kind of disappear for the rest of the episode. Yeah. See, you think I'm kidding. Um, they're at the they're at uh, Arnold's, and they they play this little trick where Ralph goes, uh, "Hey," he goes up to a girl and goes, well, "Look, you're standing under mistletoe." Or or and um, Potsy was was holding the mistletoe, and uh, all of a sudden he just grabbed her and planted a kiss right on her face. He would be expelled from high school. He should be he should be expelled from high school. There's no way he'd get away with that something like that today. And she just goes like, "Oh, Ralph Mouth," and just walks away. But like, you know, Ralph, that's um, that just it just you know at the time it probably was like, "Ha ha, he just kissed her." <laughs> but looking at it with 2021 goggles, I was like, "Yang yang yang." Um, but they're hanging out, and Richie shows up. And um, then Fonzie comes in, and he's all excited because he's got gifts for everybody. He's got gifts for the girls. He's got gifts for all. He's got gifts for Ralph. He's got gifts for for uh, for Potsy and for and for uh, Richie. And they're like, "Oh, we didn't catch you anything." He's like, "Hey, hey, Christmas is about giving, not receiving. I love Christmas. I love Christmas time." And one of the waitresses comes up and's like, "Hey." look what he got me. And it, it was a little pendant that says, you're the Gucciest, I think. And then later, another waitress come up and said, hey, look what, look what Fonzie got me. And it was the same exact pendant. So he got the same thing for all the girls. And they're like, all right, Fonzie, yeah. I, I, I forgot to mention that Richie also tried to do the, uh, the trick with the, um, with the mistletoe. And she looks up, and she's like, that's parsley. He's like, oh. And um, Ralph makes a joke. He's like, oh, of, of all the girls, you get the one who, who, who knows the ingredients of a salad or a joke, something like that. I don't remember exactly. Um, so they're talking about Christmas. And actually, this whole episode wouldn't have happened if Potsy did not uh, lend out the hand first and said, hey, uh, Fonzie, why don't you come over to our family for, for Christmas dinner? He's like, oh, you know, hey, I got, a, uh, I got a big family thing going up in Waukesha. Uh, you know, I can't go. We're going to my cousin's big spread. I'm going to be taking the... Uh, the the four o'clock train the four o'clock bus up there uh really really great time uh, i you know i can't make it though um and i noticed it was dubbed when when i heard it i was like why was that dubbed it didn't seem that bad uh but i guess uh in the original version i was reading he said the five o'clock train and that would have kind of screwed things up with the rest of the episode because they talked about the five o'clock train then the six o'clock then blah 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 so they're um they, they're they like, oh, okay, um, great. That sounds good. Have fun. Uh, over at the Cunningham house, this might have been later on in the day. I don't know. They're just talking about, uh, Joni's like, I want to have people over for Christmas. He's like, no, we can't. He, she wanted friends over. And, and Mr. C's adamant that no outsiders are coming. Only the Cunningham Five. That's right. The Cunningham Five. We're talking Mrs. C. Marion Cunningham, Mr. C, Howard Cunningham, little baby Joni Cunningham, middle son, Richie Cunningham, and the eldest, Chuck Cunningham. You forget, Chuck was there for a little while. But here's an interesting thing about this episode. What I read, at least on IMDb, this is the last ever appearance of Chuck Cunningham. Um, he was useless. Let's be honest. Now, this was the second Chuck. So Chuck was in two seasons. There was a first Chuck. This guy came and played up Chuck a couple times. Gone forever. So I don't know what happened to the first Chuck. Uh, the actor, I think it was Gavin Hurley. He, I, I may be saying it wrong. The actor recently passed away. Um, I remember seeing him 
uh, at some point on in Superman three. He was really trying to. He was like this this ex husband or ex boyfriend with uh, Talana Lang in Superman three. Three he was a drunk. Uh, he was up to no good, and I was like, that's goddamn Chuck Cunningham. Um, so, but that was not the Chuck Cunningham we see in this one. And this one is a different actor. I'm not going to look it up. And that's it. They just get rid of Chuck Cunningham. A lot of things change from season two to season three in Happy Days. The house changes. The 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 look changes. The sound changes. This you know, Happy Days went from a. I, I see. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's let's talk about this episode. So. Uh, Howard's adamant that we're going to have an old-fashioned family Christmas, hanging out, eggnog, trimming the tree, reading the, reading the night before Christmas, just us family. It's going to be fun. And, and um, Joni's like, it's going to be boring. She sang at the table. like She was like, fa-la-la-la boring or something like that. No singing at the table, Joni. Um, and uh, even Marion called Howard like, oh, bah humbug. Okay, Scrooge, eat your eggs. So later on at the... Um, they're at Howard's Cunning. They're at the Cunningham Hardware Store, and little did I know. I never remember this. There were there were employees. I thought Howard just ran it himself. It wasn't that big of a place. Howard ran it, and sometimes uh, Richie would work there. But he had three employees there. He had a lady and two fellas, an old an older lady, two fellas, and Howard's basically getting them all drunk on eggnog. Um, and he's like, Mrs. Whatever, have some eggnog. She's like, I'll have anything except a screwdriver. I look at those all day. Ho, ho, ho. And the guy's like, what about a rusty nail? Talking about all drinks that are related to hardware, uh, tools and, and, and equipment. Um, and there was just one guy in the back and he just, he wouldn't, he didn't make a noise. Richie's like, what's up with him? He's like, oh, he gets really quiet when he drinks eggnog. He drinks too much. And Howard goes to talk to him and he just kind of like tumbles over because he's too drunk. Howard got all his people drunk. Then he's like, find your way home. It's the 50s. You'll be fine. So next, boom, like next thing we see is we're outside and there's an issue with Howard's car. Um, it is, it is um, acting up. Uh, there's a hose. There's an issue with the hose. And um, there is like, there's steam coming out of it. Like we need to bring it to Fonzie's before he goes off to his family. We only have so much time. So they bring it to Fonzie's garage, and he's like, "Oh, it's just a little hole in the air, in the air pipe there, in the uh, some kind of car thing." I don't, I don't know cars. I know how to, I know right foot gas, left foot brake, um, D is drive. But he's like, "Oh, it's just a little hole, air, you know, a little hole in your windpipe. <laughs> not your windpipe. I know it's not." Um, but he's like, "It's, it's all it should be fine now." He's like, "Oh, okay. How much do I owe?" He's like, "On the house, it's Christmas Eve. Hey, no problem." He's like, are you sure? Yeah. He's like, not a problem at all. It's not going to cost you anything. He's like, let me give you something. He's like, hey, Mr. C, it's not a problem. They're like, uh, but um, you missed your four o'clock. I'll take the five o'clock. And they're like, you know what? Why don't we drive you up to your cousin's house? You know what? Don't, do, you don't have to do anything. Okay. It was just a little car thing. You don't have to worry about it. Fine, fine. We'll leave. And he's like, Mr. C, uh, I'm sorry. I, I know you're trying to be good, but I'm trying to do good, but thank you. And so they go in the car and then... Um, which is like, oh man, I forgot to give, uh, pot, uh, Fonzie his gift. So he goes back to, he opens the door and it's a, it, it's very dramatic, um, for happy days because again, the first two seasons were shot very differently. There was no studio audience. It was more like, uh, like a set with, with, um, I don't know if they called it single camera. I think I always thought single camera would be something like happy days or big bang theory, but single camera is more like, uh, something like that you'd see. Any, any sitcom that you watch that doesn't have a laugh track that looks more like shot like a movie or something um, instead of one big set. So single camera is what we had in the first two seasons. I believe I'm correct on this. Uh, so it's a very dramatic thing where he opens the door and we see through the door into the back of the garage and there's Fonzie puts up, puts up a little card and he's eating ravioli out of a can all by himself in his workshop. And I thought he lived there too, but apparently later we found out he has an apartment. So... He's eating that, and and, and uh, Pot, Richie looks in at him, and he doesn't even notice the door's open or anything. But it's awful dramatic effect. It's, it's dramatically lit, and Richie's like, "Oh, that's some bitch." He didn't say that, but he was like, "Oh man." He gets back in the car, and like, "You ready to go?" He's like, "Yeah, ready to go." So what I forgot to mention is earlier in the episode, I believe it was earlier in the episode, um, Howard needs help with something from Chuck. 
and Richie to help with a Santa Claus. There's this whole bit where they have this mechanical Santa Claus that does come into play later. They have this mechanical Santa Claus that they need, um, that they want to set up. And they they plug it in, and they're um, he, it's this arm that moves like like with a present. It just pulls the arm up, and that's it. And then Richie turns it up, and it gets stuck, and the arm just keeps going crazy. Then it throws the it throws the present, and it hit, it like it grabs um, Howard, and it's like going crazy. And I'm almost one hundred percent positive there was just a guy in this thing. I don't think there was an automatic thing at all. I could be wrong. There's a full grown. Uh, uh, Santa, the size of a man that was standing very still and just moving this arm and then it was moving very fast and I'm like, they didn't get a robot. They didn't get an animatronic to work that perfectly. There's a dude in that suit. But I don't see anything. I was looking at the trivia. There's nothing in the trivia about um, man in Santa suit. Actually, let me check the cast. That that would be interesting to see if there was something uh, called man in Santa suit. Um... Full cast, full cast. I mean, we got all the we got all the employees here. We got the the uh, the the waitresses here. Our oh, Chuck was played by Randolph Roberts. It says Al was in this. I maybe I completely. Oh, I think I think um, I think Fonzie gave him a a gift as well. So yeah, it doesn't say anything about the Santa Claus. Oh wait, Mrs. Harrison. That's th- that's what is going on here. That's the woman who starred in, um, who was in the worked at the the um, the hardware store. So I looked it up to see how many episodes she was in, and she was in two episodes of um, Happy Days. Except the weird thing is, is in the second episode, she was. It was the following year. She her cast. She was cast as Lady. So they didn't even <laughs> they didn't bring her back as anyone else. They just had him had her as um as like a just a, a person who was there for no like no reason. So see this cast, um okay, here we go. In this guy was Orville in one episode, he worked in the hardware store and he was customer in a previous episode. So there was no this this was a one time thing, I'm telling you. Cunningham's hardware did not have any anybody else working there ever again? That's crazy. Um, so anyway, uh, the Santa was a, was obviously I think a person, even though there's no cast and nothing that I can find. Without really, I didn't really look that hard. Okay, I looked at IMDb. Um, so they go home and they're doing all the Christmas stuff and trimming the tree and and Richie just looks down. He's not happy. Uh, meanwhile, Joni is just completely making fun of Chuck. Like, she goes, look what Richie got you. And it was a basketball. She's bouncing. And he's like, it's wrapped up. She's like, I wonder what it is. He's like, be careful. It might be something breakable. It's a basketball. Chuck is dumb. Like, at one point, Howard looks at him like, you giant dumb oaf. Um, and I guess they didn't they didn't need him. They just realized it was irrelevant. You know, earlier we're, um, when I would, I did the, the Family Matters episode with Jason, remember, there was the, the younger girl, Judy. Boom. Gone. Just out of the picture. It happens sometimes. Um, but you realize there's a family of three kids, and all of a sudden there's a family of two. And the oldest, it wasn't like a little kid just disappeared. It was the oldest guy. Just, you know, he wasn't there that much, and then all of a sudden he wasn't there at all. Um, but they're all working on the tree, and they can't quite get the lights going, but they, they haven't figured it out yet. But Richie's in the dumps, and he's like, you know what? I think Fonzie's alone. I think he made the whole thing up. And like, he said he was going to his cousins. Howard's like, Howard's saying that. And he's, I think later on he says, Richie figured it all out. But I think he's also like, you know what? If this is what Fonzie wants, this is what Fonzie wants. And then, but then Marion was down. And then Joni was down. Even Chuck was like, oh. and Howard's like, fine, let's go over and see what he's doing. Yeah, let's just check on him. They go to his apartment. He's got a nice little apartment, I thought. And there's music playing. They knock on the door. And the music stops. And they're like, we know you're in there. It's Richie. I just wanted to say hey. And um, he's like, he opens the door. And he's, um, I think he wanted to say he he was bringing his gift over. Maybe. I don't know why. And then Uh, Fonzie's leaving. He's like, oh, hey, hey, you just caught me. I'm trying to leave. I was leaving a little later. I'm catching the later bus. And um, he's like, well, can we talk to you for a second? He's like, I guess so, yeah. He goes, oh, yeah, let's go inside. And Howard goes to help him with the luggage. And Fonzie pulls it back. He's like, he notices it. And Howard notices it's empty. And Richie's like, I mean, uh, Fonzie's like, uh, 
I pick light. And they go in, and Howard, um, Richie's like, listen, I think it's too late for you to go to your cousins, okay? I think with the driving, the bus, why don't you spend the night at our house, and it's easier, and you go to your cousins tomorrow. Spend the Christmas with us. He's like, hey, you know, it's really nice of you, but, um, I, I, you know, I, I got to go to my cousins. I'm, I'm, they're waiting for me up there. Everyone's waiting for me. And Howard's like, okay, okay. He goes, you know what, though? There is um, something I thought maybe you could help us with. He goes, we have this Santa Claus that's not working. And um, I thought maybe you could come over and see if it could work. He's like, yeah, yeah, I could figure that out. Oh, yes, I was right. So um, it's the Santa. So Howard's like, you know that Santa Claus we put out? It's not working. And it, I thought maybe, you know, it might not take you very long to, to, to look at it. I thought maybe you could you could take a look at it and see if you could fix it. And he's like, you know what? Yeah, I, I could check that out. I, I could check that out. I know what you're talking about. Um, before that, though, Richie's like, oh, um, I want you to, we have a really nice tree. I want you to see it. And, and Fonzie's like, I got a tree. It's this little tiny little branch. And Howard's like, that's a nice tree. He goes, well, that reminds me, I got a gift for you. Uh, and that's when Howard starts talking about the Santa and saying, hey, you know, maybe you could come over and check the Santa out. He's like, yeah, I could do that. Um, he's like, sure. And then he goes, um, but then I'm taking the I'm taking the bus. I'm I'm taking the later bus and I got to go. OK, but we'll do that now. He's like and Howard and Richie look at each other like, OK. And as they leave, um, Fonzie comes right back in real quick to just move the gift close to the tree. And then has this big smile on his face. And that was the first real heartwarming moment for me. Like, he's like, I get to actually spend Christmas with the Cunninghams. I know what they're doing. And uh, this is great. And Fonzie, of course, fixes the, the um, snowman pretty quickly. And uh, he comes in. And everyone's excited to see him. And he's like, oh, this is great. And he's talking about the tree. But then he's like, you got to see my cousin's place. It's got a living room bigger than this. It's got a tree bigger than this. It's going to be great. I can't wait to go. And Chuck's like, me not know how to fix lights. Chuck can't fix the lights because he's a dope. Uh, and and he's like, we tried. I tried every single bulb with this. With I tried every single socket with this bulb. And and Fonzie's like, would you ever think this bulb is the bad bulb? I never thought of that. He's like, okay, um, let me let me see if I can figure this out. And he's like, you know, how'd you guys ever get through Thanksgiving? Which is a pretty funny joke. So then he's working on the lights and he figures it out. And they're like, you know what, though? You missed your uh, bus. He's like, oh, um, huh. It's like, well, you should probably stay the night. He's like, no, no, I can't stay the, stay the night. They all are like, come on, stay the night, stay the night. Even Chuck's like, stay night. And, and Howard's like, you know what? Actually, you don't have to stay. I, you know what? Why don't I drive you? I could drive you up there right now. We can get you there in an hour. And so he starts w walking Fonzie. Fonzie's like, you know, it's really snowing out there. I don't want you driving in the snow. It's pretty dangerous. And, um. Then Mrs. Cunningham says, you know what, Howard, uh, you know what, Fonzie, you're staying the night and that's final. And then Fonzie looks at her and says, my mother used, used to talk to me like that, Mrs. C. She's the only one who could get away with it until you. And that's when I started tearing up. I was like, oh, my God, the connection of Mrs. C and, and, and Fonzie is starting. You know, later on, he, she only called him Howard, uh, Arthur. And oh, that was that was my favorite. She calls him Fonzie here. But later on, it's just Arthur. When they become dance troupe, remember they 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 do ballroom dancing together. My God, this is the greatest show ever. Um, so he's like, "All right, I'll, I'll stay, I'll stay." And um, he goes down to Mister Cunningham, who's roasting chestnuts on an open fire. Literally, he's doing this, and uh, he's like, "Hey, Mister C, thank you for uh, for uh, you know, if he, I know you were smart about Walker Show. You know, you were wise to it." He's like, "Actually, it was Richard who figured it out." He's like, "Oh, all right." Do you mind if I do that? So he takes over the chestnuts. Then Richie comes over and says, um, and starts roasting marshmallows. And he's like, hey, kid, you got all the freckles in the right place. I would have been like, what? What did you say? Um, but he's like, oh, wait, you're, ro you're, you're not doing the marshmallows right. So he's correcting the marshmallows, correcting the chestnuts. And then Joni's like, hey, somebody needs to read uh, The Night Before Christmas. And Fonzie's like, hey, I could do that too. And then he starts reading The Night Before Christmas. Um, it was just, and he's reading it, and it's it's just, they're having fun. Uh, you know, he's showing the pictures and everything. And then we see a shot of the Santa working perfectly. I'm telling you, there's a dude in that suit under a mask. I wouldn't be surprised if it's Gary Marshall. So they, they 
we cut to the commercial come back and it's Christmas morning and they're you know um Howard's posing for photos with his with his with his new golf bag and Chuck's got a new basketball and Fonzie and Joni are looking at a viewfinder. Joni plays a trick on him and says, Oh, there's bathing beauties. And, and he's like, What are you looking at? Oh, there's only palm trees here. Uh, which I thought was pretty funny. Uh, then they, they all they go in to have a dinner and they're like, You know what? Uh, time to say grace. And Howard's like, You know what? Fonzie's our guest. He can say grace. He's like, Oh, yeah? Oh, 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 okay. And he looks up and he's like, Hey, God, thanks. Oh, man, I'm doing it again. I'm tearing up. Now, I don't know if it's because I'm fresh coming off of 8-Bit Christmas and they got me going. But then I watched this and I was like, yeah, the emotions. The emotions are real. And this show brings it out with brings it out to me. So they start carving up the, the dinner and that is the end of the episode. Uh, and then we get the, the end music and the end of the episode. And boom, that is it. Happy Days, Season 2. Episode 11, uh, guess who's coming to Christmas? That was my dog. Happy Days, Season 2, Episode 11 from 1974. Guess who's coming to Christmas? The big finale. Of sitcom, all ye faithful, but I still want to talk to you about happy days. So I talk about how happy days is my favorite all time show. Now, this episode came out in 74, I wasn't even born yet. Uh, and the show lasted till 84, I believe. Um, it's, I'm saying it's my favorite show. I should know that. But it, it was 84 when it ended. Uh, and so I was eight years old when it ended. It was something I knew. I remember watching. I remember seeing live episodes as it happened here and there. I think I remember seeing the shark, uh, the jumping of the shark, I believe. Um, I, I remember that being a thing. I, I just, I Happy Days has always been there. But to me... When I think Happy Days, as a kid, the first thing I think of is TBS. TBS used to play Happy Days all the time at like 6.05. Remember TBS <clears throat> was a weird thing where they, they, they had Turner Broadcasting Station. I think that's what the S stood for. There was no TNT at this point. They just aired old things, reruns. And they always did it five minutes past the hour. Um, I think later on they started showing Braves games, but... I always thought it was, well, let's say at six o'clock you put something on and you don't really like it. And you're flipping around and all of a sudden six oh five and you're like, Oh, oh, this is Happy Days just started at six oh five. Oh, this is the one where Fonzie has a beard and he's and he's he's teaching Eugene and Flick at high school. Oh great, I'll watch this. Uh so I think that's what it always what what it meant to what it was. That's what the six oh five thing was. That's my guess. Um so I just in constant reruns constantly on i remember i there's a few other connections like i believe yes in college now i was i i, I guess i was a, a a goody two shoes in college i just didn't do anything i didn't go to i didn't go out to parties i i you know my wife i'd, I'd wait till seven o'clock where it was cheaper to call her and i'd call home it was still expensive because i used my mother's credit card but i would call home and be like hi i miss you um and i would i would go to class I would eat at like 4.30, which was really stupid. Uh, and then I'd come home and, and, and just do my homework and, and kind of, then I'd chill. And I had a TV and I, it might've been TBS at the time, I believe, that I would watch a lot of Doogie Howser and a tremendous amount of Happy Days. And that's when I fell in love with it again in college. And I was watching it all the time, every day, doing my homework. Um, I watched it constantly. Uh, and then... A third time, when when uh, around 2005, my wife and I we moved to Florida. We lived there for a year. I got my first DVR. Whoa! This is the future. My first DVR, and one of the things I did was hit every episode of Happy Days, just record it. And I was, you know, I I couldn't keep up. There were so many on there, and I'd watch a bunch at a time. Uh, and that was just like, oh, this is so great. And I think also, I I in, in between there. 
after college waiting to get a job, I would just stay home and, and send resumes out all day. Uh, like it, I was kind of not, I was done with classes, but I hadn't quite graduated yet. I was done with my, um, with my internship. So I'm just sending out resumes at home and every day was Laverne and Shirley and happy days. It was just always there. And now it's a little harder to find. Now, MeTV is a place that has it. And I found a few there and I recorded And what did I do? I recorded a few and I watched them and I loved it. Every time I watch it, it is like, you know, I, I, I use this comment, uh, I think, to Chris talking about Cheers. feels like a warm blanket. It's just relaxing. It just makes you think of your youth. And that's what Happy Days does to me. I don't care if it's, if it's Richie. I don't care if it's Chachi. I don't care if it's Flick, Beard, No Beard. Yes, the show got silly. Uh, Fonzie got crazy powers almost. Uh, they had Mork. They had the devil. They had crazy things. I told you about the dancing. One time Fonzie was, he had like a milk can escape. It doesn't matter. All of it is just, is just part of my youth. And I love it. And I love happy days for it. And that's why it's day 25. And happy days will always be day 25 of a uh, sitcom, All Ye Faithful. I've made this a declaration from hence, hereforth, henceforth, for as long as there's a sitcom, All Ye Faithful, and for as long as there are Christmas episodes of Happy Days to fill um, a slot, those slots will be filled on day 25. Um, from here into perpetuity, which I believe I'm using correctly, I learned that from Shark Tank. It is just day 25 will always be another episode of, I don't care if it's, if we get down to the point where it's just Potsy, um, you know, remember when Potsy kind of, he got higher, like Ralph Mouse, like I'm going to the army and Richie's like, I'm going to the army too. And Ralph's like, I'm staying here. And he does this whole thing where the leg bones connect to the, the chin bone. He did this whole dance where he's like walking around and he was like, he was this crooner now, like Anson Williams became the singer and he, it was again. I love it. I know, I know, I know this thing to be critical of and things to laugh at and snicker, but my God, I love it. I love it all. Um, what else is there to say about Happy Days? Now, <clears throat> streaming Happy Days has been a little tricky. Uh, at one point, Hulu had them, and but they only had so many episodes. And that bothered me. Uh, then it was hard to find. And it just, it just kind of, it, it, it's a Christmas miracle that this year we signed up for Paramount Plus for a few months. And lo and behold, there happens to be Happy Days on Paramount Plus. But here's the thing. The whole series isn't there. It's just one season. Season two. That's it. Guess what? That's the exact season I was looking for. And this is the exact episode I was looking for. It was there. Able to watch it on a legitimate stream, which makes me very happy. Except when I hit play to watch it, something didn't feel right. It's the second season, and we get the, the jukebox re record being put down on, and then all of a sudden we get Sunday, Monday, Happy Days, which is fantastic. I love it. One of the best sitcom songs ever, except that's not the song that should be playing on this episode. If I'm not correct, that wasn't until season three, I believe. Season one, season two... It's goddamn one, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock, five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Come on. It was Bill Haley and the Comets. Rock around the clock. And my understanding is, is there's some kind of music rights thing. So they took the, the original opening and then they put the Happy Days song on it. Uh, and it's even a little extended. Like they kind of added, the, they like doubled the verse twice because the beginning's pretty long. Uh, and they just... They just, it, it, it felt odd. And that is just a musical right thing. I'm sure if I found it someplace else or maybe, a, I don't know if the DVD has the same thing also. I'm not really sure. Um, I looked it up and it said there was no extended version of this, but there, a song was omitted for rights. I believe the song omitted for rights is be, maybe this one. I don't know if there was any other moment in the episode where a song was taken out. I didn't see it. Um, another thing I read about this, this, ep this episode, even though I'm talking about Happy Days as a whole, I forgot to mention that uh, I said this was the last episode of Chuck, but in 1976, there was an episode where they had a, or at one point there was an, this episode was aired as a, as a flashback. 
And Fonzie was telling uh, Arnold about this. And then they go back and talk about it. And then at another point, he's telling Al about it. Like they re they redid it and they had Al show it, you know, talking about it. Um, but, and they said that was the only other time that Chuck was mentioned in the future or referenced. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, this episode, you know, the music at the end was still kind of that old version of Happy Days. It was... The Happy Days song, but it was like a, uh, an, an end credit version of the Happy Days theme song. It was just, it's just not the, the openings. It's just not the opening song. Again, it's this slightly different version. Hello, sunshine. Goodbye, rain. She's wearing my school ring on the chain. She's my steady. I'm a man. I'm going to love her all I can. Still something I want to dance to. I remember... As a kid, I just assumed that, that Fonzie sang this song. And I can, I still picture the guy singing this song is Henry Winkler. I could, I could, I feel like I should start a Happy Days podcast. But again, finding all these episodes would be hard. Um, I would call it, I would call it Sit On It and Listen. That's the name of the podcast. Um, my, my God. I, I think that's it. I think I've covered just about everything I can think of at least right now with this episode. And uh, you guys need to, you guys need to go spend some time with your family. It's Christmas day. Come on, give me a break here, guys. Um, you know, sick. I'm all ye faithful. This was an idea I had walking my dog. I think, I think I had it last. I think I had it around Christmas time last year. I was like, uh, you know, I wanted to do a Christmas thing. And so I tweeted about it at the beginning of the year. And lo and behold, here we are. I did it, uh, and 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 we did it because uh, it wouldn't it, it, it wouldn't even matter if it wasn't for you guys listening, and it wouldn't matter if I didn't have some great people helping me out with this. I want to thank all my guests who appeared this year. I'm talking about Chris, I'm talking about Jay, I'm talking about Eric, I'm talking about Brandon. What you talking about, Willis? I'm talking about my guests. Uh, oh my God! Now, and, and and here's the thing. There are so many sitcoms that I have not touched yet. You know what I mean? Hey, yo, oh, hey. I mean, you could say to yourself, well, I mean, you've covered all, all the classics. No, no, no. I haven't even come close to covering all the classics. Okay? Yes, I covered Alf, but there are other classics out there. Um, and, and there are other Christmas episodes of the great shows that I covered this year that I may want to cover again next year or in future years. The, the rules are... Every year, there's one rule I have. Every year, the show can't be repeated. So if I do the Brady Bunch again, well, that's it. Brady Bunch is done for that year. It's 25 different sitcom shows. But, you know, as I said, Happy Days is going to be back. And it's going to be back every year as long as I can possibly do it. Um, but if you think, uh, you know, that, uh, that I can't come up with with another list of shows, I just have one thing to say to you. Don't be ridiculous. Ah, you know what that I'm talking about, right? Right? Come on. I, I've been thinking about that line all day. I was going to end with that, but then how could I end with, how could I end with that and not my, my normal catchphrase, which is, um, did I do that? I don't know what I'm talking about now. It's, it, it, you guys got to go spend time with your family. Okay. It's Christmas. I'm off with, with, with my brother, his family, and um, and my parents and we're all having a, a, a great old time. Uh, so I want to thank you guys for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Hope you guys have a great Christmas uh, and a happy new year. And I hope you stick with the podcast because, you know, it'll be back in a couple months with some other stuff. Uh, and I have some other stuff uh, that, I'll, that I'm working on constantly at fansnotexperts.com. Go there. Check out Fine Movies, Fine Spirits. Uh, and check out all the other podcasts we do there. Um. So you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Geek Mentality. You know that already. The website is fansnotexperts.com. The Facebook page is fansnotexperts. And this is sitcom, all ye faithful, turning off the TV one last time this year. But we'll be back again next year. And until then, keep watching sitcoms because they turns out they're, they're an underappreciated art form. Uh, even the bad ones are kind of great. And... Um, Merry Christmas. And here is my theme song. This is my podcast. I made it. Geek Mentality is what I named it. 
And I think you should listen and subscribe Cause I'm kinda funny and awesome I think that I'm worth your time And I'm kinda handsome My mom says Please listen and Please subscribe At least listen to this episode Table, Mary. Yeah. Thank you. Are you going to say grace, dear? Well, I, I kind of thought that since Fonzie was a guest for dinner, maybe he'd like to say it. Oh, hey. Uh... Oh, okay. Hey, God. Thanks. Fans not experts.